No deadline, but we're moving speedily towards it. What if you get the arrested? I don't care. In the past, you have asked your friends not to think precious minds by your past. Yes. Why are you? You seem to have calmed down a bit in that. Yeah. Because they have changed as well. The people are saying that federalism is not working for Nigeria. How do you think that the new federal government? Confederation. Every ethnicity will have the rights to control their resources and to govern themselves. There will be no interference from Enugu whatsoever. How do you react to the U.S. ambassador's prediction that Biafra is a failed project or Biafra, Biafra project is a failed? They said something about the state of Israel in 1948 when it came into existence. It will come. There's nothing man can do to stop it. So in this new Biafra, if it gets actualized eventually, would you contest for political positions? No. Why not? My job is to restore Biafra, not to serve it in any political capacity. So how do you react to Ohane Zengibu's disownment of you as well as that of Abga? I'm not sure they disown me. We disagreed, but the media would like to hype it up because they want to magnify the differences that we have. It's just mere emphasis, divergent views and emphasis, basically. That's what I risk We are Republicans by nature, so people are entitled to their views. I may not welcome it, but. I defend the right to hold it all the time. Hi, Paul, and yourself reacted to the Arawa nation to Igbo to the nation of It wasn't directed at us, so I couldn't possibly react to it because it was not directed at us. But I, I think it goes to show that they're in tune with the prevailing trend, which is referendum. At least we welcome the fact that some of them are Democrats. Yeah, I don't so. understand how it wasn't directed. You, you are the leader of the Afro Igbo. Yes. They are part of Biafra. They've been your your landlord said you should go. Then what do you expect to do? Exactly. Your landlord said you should go. Then you try and go. If you said they will kill you, they've been doing it since 1945. They kill all the time, so it's nothing new to us. It was reported that you had said no elections in Nigeria. Do you think that can be possible without without bloodshed? How can you be bloodshedding when you're in your house, sitting down and enjoying Ofensala on the 18th of November, 2017? How is that bloodshed? When you take uh, new elections, mm -hmm. new referendum, mm -hmm. how do you intend to make this happen? Are you, are you going to declare that you are trying to keep at home on election day? Yes. Yes. There will be no movement. No cats, no dogs outside, no chicken, nothing. Okay. So Complete silence as well. What did you do? Say that you are a hypocrite. And wow. that, um, you have a British passport, mm -hmm. and yet you have asked your friends to destroy their administration. What are your reactions to this? I never give such a directive. You're asking me a direct question, I, and I speak truthfully and directly. I did not give such an order. If people want to destroy whatever documents or papers they have on them, that's entirely up to them. Okay. And I'm not a hypocrite either, because I was. My land was forcibly taken over by external forces, and I'm being forced to live under it. It's my job to fight to get myself out of it. Now I'm taking away all of them. I had British traveling documents before they still fought for independence and got it. Something applied to George Washington in America. He was a British colony settler, traveled about as a British citizen before he got USA out of the mess. That was colonial rule from England. Something in India. There's nothing new. I've been now uh, in the public limelight for close to four years. So people know what I can do and what I cannot do. If people wish to delude themselves with false propaganda and information about me, they're more than entitled to it. I cannot stop them from doing so. But what I say to them is that those people who are feeding you this junk information about me, they do not wish you well. People like us, IPOB, are the only ones that can save you from your chronic poverty, from your diseased state of mind, from your horrible bad roads, from your non-existent hospitals, from your absence of infrastructure. And we're the only ones who can make it possible for you to get a job. That's how it is. All those people telling you all those nonsense about Nnamdekan is because they know that Nnamdekan is capable of articulating a policy or a viewpoint that can get you out of the mess that you're in. So they want you to remain poor, to remain blind, for your parents to be dying. 
it it benefits them. So um, basically, you be granted bail conditions. Yes. And um, the Nigerian government and a lot of public opinion analysts mm -hmm. seem to think that they're breaching the bail conditions. Where were those people when Buhari refused to obey court order upon court order upon court order? Why didn't anybody go to Daura or go to Asarok to ask Buhari why he'd failed to obey court orders to set me free to release Dasuki and to release Dr. Sakzagi? Why have they not obeyed the court order to release Bright Chimeze Ishiwa as pronounced by a competent court of law in Uyo? Why don't you concern yourself with the gross abuse of human rights being perpetrated on a daily basis by DSS, by the police, and by the army. Why are you not trying as hard as possible to uncover the mass grave that they have in army barracks in Onitsha? Why have you not questioned them about the amnesty report and about the slaughter and the butchering of our people? Why are you people so hell-bent on things that don't matter? Whereas you should be concerning yourself with things that actually matter. Have you asked them why you have no light? Why you must run a generator? Have you asked them why they import refined fuel when you have four modern refineries, and you have abundance of crude oil. Have you asked them any of those questions? Why don't have good roads? You have aggregates, you have stones, you have bitumen coming from the ground. Why do you have bad roads? And you have unemployed graduates of structural, or should I say civil engineering. Why are you not asking them all those questions? Because they understand that the they can't mean well for the masses, for the people, the downtrodden, people who are suffering because of poverty. They turn your mind around because they know you are not disciplined enough to understand that you need to stand your ground to demand for what is yours. That is why it is very easy to twist the mind of a black person. Che Guevara came to Congo to fight. Many, many years ago, over 50 years ago, why did he leave? Because he said, a black African man cannot be disciplined enough to put the need of his self-preservation and survival over the need of the stomach. How can they perform when there is no Southeast leader who is responsible for the maintenance of the Enugu Iwacha, which is Port Harcourt Expressway? How can I hold any governor responsible when all these so called federal roads are denied any form of attention or maintenance? How can I? Because it, is not, it's, it, it belongs to what they call the exclusive list. So now tell me, how can I hold them responsible for that? Are they meant to build Second Niger Bridge? Is it their business to build a Second Niger Bridge? Is it their business to compel the Africa Development Bank to provide underwriting loans to people who want to borrow money to build factories and industries? Is it their fault as well? But who builds the roads in the north? From the same oil money coming from Okwa. From the same proceeds from gas fields in Ohaji, in Ebuema. And you're telling me you're in one Nigeria, one viable, unity-driven country. It's a charade, it's fake, it's a lie, and I'm sure you know it. So, um, I was going to Twitter, and um, there's this tweet you know, trending about yes. a certain Ekita Chiduka. Yes. Who drove you home yes. from prison. Mm -hmm. And now he's declared that he's going to campaign for the election in Ananda. Yes. And then now you are home again to say no election in Ananda. Yes. There is no irony because I'm a very consistent person. I do not change. People can change as a business. I don't change. I'm a number can I don't change. I don't change. You don't think this is some kind of a That Sita Chidoka drove me from prison. You want me to walk from prison from Kujet to Abuja? So people felt that um, he was lending you a helping hand. He was supporting you when you were in prison. He was not supporting me. He was concerned about my plight as any other sensible human being ought to be. That's what he was trying to do. Being reasonable. And that's what he did. I would do the same thing. I got the fact that I got lawyers for suspected Boko Haram inmates at DSS. Does that mean I'm a Boko Haram supporter, sympathizer? The fact that I brought parents of ours are people detained at DSS illegally for nearly four years. Does that mean I support Boko Haram? Does that mean I support Boko Haram? Exactly. So why should Ochita Chidoka giving me a lift from prison represent anything extraordinary?
Because they know that's what will appeal to you. I said it earlier, your primordial instinct of debasing yourself to your jealousy, basically. People who try to be like me cannot be like me, so they resort to very cheap slander and blackmail. But I welcome it. It makes me become a better. I work twice harder than I should. So the more these battles come, the better for me. They know they're misguided. They know they're lying. They know what they're saying is false, but they say it because they're hoping to tap into the reservoir you have of greed, envy, and jealousy. Maybe if you cannot defeat Nam De Khan in a recent debate, why don't we try greed and jealousy? Look at him, he's only he's him, why not somebody else? You can't be me because it can never be me. Are there complications you would rather you would want to have happen to put an end to Biafra in the Nigerian government? You've gotten the question wrong in my view, because there can never be an end to Biafra. Biafra will come. It doesn't matter what man does, it will come. So no one can there, stop it. If you like, let my wife be the first woman U.S. president. It won't stop me. It's very interesting how you get um, news uh, that you consider to be newsworthy or the wrong type of news and not the positive one. Myself came here we, along with 15 other groups and made me the overall leader of the Afro. I'm sure you're aware of that. Try and report that tomorrow often. We're not fighting each other. We know where we're going. We're going to get the Afro. There is nothing anybody can do about it. Absolutely nothing. Nothing, nothing. I need them to understand this. We've crossed the Rubicon, the point of no return. There is nothing anybody can do. If I'm alive, if I'm dead, if I'm wherever I may be, the Afro will come. If I'm dead, it's even better because it will come far more quicker. I can assure you. If Biafra is fighting for you, no one will touch your property. If you're fighting alone, you're bound to lose it. So Biafra is the best. We will become the 16th member country of ECOWAS. If Nigeria doesn't release those properties, then we'll take them to court and we'll get them back. Even twice the value. The Jews had investments all over the world. Most of the priceless artifacts and paintings belong to many families in Germany. It was stolen by the Nazi party. Do you know that? Eventually they got everything back with compensation on top of it. That's what we're going to do. If you touch our investments, we'll come back for you. And we'll know where we can get it from. So there is nothing for anyone to worry about. It's only, if you, I'm not stopping you from being a Nigerian, if you, if you are born on the streets of Lagos and you want to be a Lagosian and your, your name is Adama, oh, well and good, there's no problem.